It's kind of crazy that TLDs, you know, the thing at the end of the domain, vary so wildly in safety. Not in the like, are they secure sense, but in the will they exist sense. The amount of hell I and others have been through around different country TLDs is unbelievable. I actually lost my t3.gg domain for a little bit because the country that it's based out of was unhappy that I filed with a PO box instead of a real mailing address. And that had to be forwarded through like five people before getting to me after they had taken the domain away, after I had paid for the renewal, by the way. So I paid them, they took it away. It's chaos. I have a whole video if you're curious about that, but we're not talking about GG domains for once. They are chaos, but that chaos seems to have subsided a little bit. Today's chaos is a little more scary because it's not the gamer TLD, it's the tech TLD. It's .io. If you didn't know what .io stands for, you might think it's input output like it is in the programming world. But generic TLDs, like ones that are not country codes, you know, like .live or .work, those types of ones, those have to be three or more characters. What that means is all the TLDs that are two characters are country code. They're not generic terms. So even if they're fun things like .tv, .io, that actually stands for a country's name. And whether or not that country decides to allow people outside of it to use the domain is up to them. And that's why IO is so interesting because it's the British Indian Ocean territory. They're barely a country. They're a very small island cluster that makes a lot of their government's money by selling these domains. But some big changes just happened that might put those same domains at, at meaningful risk. I am terrified, y'all should be too. Let's dive in to the really scary world where we might be losing some really important domains. Before we can dive in, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Infinite Red, who's mostly known for doing consulting around React Native. So why are they sponsoring this? Two reasons. One, they'll help you avoid really painful pitfalls like picking the wrong TLD, which can be a disaster for anybody. More importantly, because they're the only company I trust enough and trusts me enough to let me just do a quick ad like this without going any further. I really trust these guys. Every other brand I work with, there's a ton of back and forth. And they just, they don't get it. And I don't know how to put this into words properly. They do. I'm not reading a script right now. I just love working with these guys. They understand React Native so well, that they make me want to dive in deeper. So if you're at a company that is exploring React Native or is already in it and just needs help leveling things up, you want to onboard devs to React Native, you want to make your code base more viable, you want to port over to React Native entirely or maybe start a project from scratch. There is no better people to talk to. Even if you're not going to pay them to work with you all full-time, it's at least worth the call because they'll give you the advice on whether or not you're going down the right path going down the wrong path can be really, really painful. If you want to avoid these common pitfalls or dig yourself out of one that you've already fallen into, give Infinite Red a call. I trust these guys a lot. And that's not something they pay me to say. They paid for the spot. This is what I actually feel. And make sure if you can, you have a chance to talk to Jamin. That dude's a beast. Thank you to Infinite Red for sponsoring today's video. One shout out before we dive in, Epos Vox is the one who put this on my radar. He covers everything you need to know about streaming and video content creation stuff. Check him out if you haven't. Great dude. Love him so much. He was really helpful for me as I got started. So thank you, Epos. Let's dive in. The disappearance of an internet domain. How geopolitics can alter digital infra. The British government announced last week that it was transferring sovereignty of an island in the Indian Ocean to the country Mauritius. Hopefully I got that right. Gareth immediately realized its online implications, the end of the .io domain suffix. In this piece, he explores how geopolitical change can unexpectedly disrupt the digital world. This will be fun. On October 3rd, the British government announced that it was giving up sovereignty over a small tropical atoll in the Indian Ocean known as the Chagos Islands. The islands would be handed over to the neighboring island country of Mauritius about 1,100 miles off the southeastern coast of Africa. The story did not make the tech press, but perhaps it should have. The decision to transfer the islands to their new owner will result in the loss of one of the tech and gaming industry's preferred TLDs, which is .io. Whether it's github.io, gaming site itch.io, or even Google IO, which arguably kicked off the trend. I'm gonna just ignore UTFS.io, the upload thing, file domain. Okay, thank you guys for the correction on the pronunciation. Mauritius, Mauritius, these are contradictory. I tried. We're going to go with Mauritius. Hopefully that's right. Regardless, this is bad. Not that they acquired the land, but the TLD might get lost in the process. Terrifying stuff. 
Its popularity is sometimes explained by how it represents the abbreviation for input and output, or the data received and processed by any system. What's not often acknowledged is that it's more than a quippy domain. It's a country code top-level domain, which is a CCTLD. The two types of domains are CCTLDs, which are country code, and GTLDs, which are generic, global, whatever, I don't even know what it stands for, but they're the ones that everyone can use wherever because they're managed by web standards. It involves politics far beyond the digital world. Yep, here things go. Since 1968, the UK and US have operated a major military base on the Chagos Islands, officially known as the British Indian Ocean Territory. The neighboring nations of Mauritius had always disputed British sovereignty over them. The Mauritian government has long argued that the British illegally retained control when they gained independence. It has taken over 50 years, but the dispute is finally resolved. In return for a 99-year lease for the military base, the islands will become part of Mauritius. Once the treaty is signed, the British Indian Ocean Territory will cease to exist. The country the .io domains are from will no longer exist after this. Oh boy. Various international bodies will update their records. In particular, the International Standard for Organization will remove the country code IO from its specification. Yeah, this is bad. The Internet Assigned Number Authority, IANA, which creates and delegates TLDs, uses a spec to determine which top-level country domains should exist. Once I.O. is removed, the IANA will refuse to allow any new registrations with a .io domain. It will also automatically begin the process of retiring existing ones. There is no official count for the number of extant .io domains, which means that officially .io and countless websites are going to disappear. At a time where domains can still go for millions of dollars, it's a shocking reminder that there are forces outside of the internet that still affect our digital lives. This is bad. I've been increasingly skeptical of country TLDs for a while now, but I always thought IO was safe simply because it's being used. And I guess this is the mistake. And it's a mistake I've made a whole bunch. It's I see all these big countries or I see all these big companies using these TLDs. I see Twitch on .TV. I see Google using .io for stuff. And I assume that this one's probably okay. And then I get screwed with my .gg domain. I lose it for like two days. I don't get any email in that time these things are risky no matter what. And it's sad to see one of the biggest eat these risks. Shout out to Every for this awesome coverage, by the way. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check out the blog post and see what else they've covered. This is uniquely good deep coverage and I wanted to shout them out for it. When domains outlive countries, the removal of an entire country or territory from the world map is incredibly rare. So one might ask what the process is for deleting a domain that is so clearly documented. There are two organizations responsible for domains and internet addresses. The INA decides which should and shouldn't be a TLD, like .com, .org, .uk, or .nz. The organization originated from the University of Southern California, although it was only formalized in 94, when it won a contract put out by the U.S. It operated for several years as a small research and management committee. As the internet grew, it became clear that a more formal setup was required. By 98, the INA became part of a new organization, the ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. ICANN, based in the U.S., was given the broader responsibility of overseeing the operational stability of the Internet and ensuring international interests were represented. These two organizations might seem like they have mundane roles, but they have found themselves making some of the hardest decisions on the global Internet. On September 19, 1990, the INA created and delegated a top-level domain .su to the USSR. I was wondering if this would come up. The .su domains still exist, but when the USSR collapsed, it became a total mess. Less than a year later, the USSR collapsed. Crazy that it was within a year of getting the TLD. I was wondering what the timeline was for that. Good to know. At the time, nobody thought about what should happen with the .su domain. The internet as we know it was still years away. So the .su domain was handed to Russia to operate alongside its own .ru. The Russian government agreed that it would eventually be shut down, but no clear rules around its governance or when that should happen were defined. But ambiguity is the worst thing for a TLD. Unknowingly, the decision created an environment in which .su became a digital wild west. Today, it is a barely policed TLD, a plausibly deniable home for Russian dark ops and a place where supremacist content and cybercrime have found cover. I will say every time I see a .su, it's something pretty sus, so that checks out. A few years later, in 92, the INA learned a similarly harsh lesson, the end of the Balkans War, which saw the breakup of Yugoslavia into several smaller states. In its aftermath, the joint nations of Serbia and Montenegro attempted to adopt the name Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Slovenia and Croatia objected, claiming that it implied Serbia and Montenegro were Yugoslavia's legitimate successors. The two countries protested to the UN. Kind of crazy that global politics is affecting TLDs and vice versa to this degree. As the international issues over Serbia and Montenegro's name rumbled on throughout the early 90s, the IANA remained unsure about who should control .yu, which was Yugoslavia's top level domain. Email access and the internet were now integral to research and international discussions, and the INA's ambiguity led to an extraordinary act of academic espionage. Oh boy, interesting. 
actual consequences for these things. It's going to be fun. According to the journalist Kalen Kolov, Slovenian academics traveled to Serbia at the end of 92. Their destination was the University of Belgrade's in the country's capital. On arrival, they broke into the university and stole all the hosting software and domain records for the .yu TLD, everything they needed to seize control. For the next two years, the .yu domain was unofficially operated by Arnis, which is the Academic and Research Network of Slovenia, which repeatedly denied its involvement in the original heist. That's kind of crazy that they broke in, stole the domain and all the hosting stuff, and then pretended they didn't do that. Arnais rejected all requests by Serbian institutions for new domains, severely limiting the country's ability to participate in the growing internet community. The situation became so messy that, in 94, IANA founding member John Postel personally stepped in and overrode the IANA regulations, forcibly transferring ownership of the .yu domain back to the University of Belgrade. In 2006, Montenegro declared independence from Serbia. With the digital revolution now firmly underway, the IANA was determined not to let the chaos reign once again. They created new TLDs, .rs for Serbia and .me for Montenegro. By the way, .me, not a real GTLD, it's Montenegro. So many of these domains are owned by random countries, which is kind of insane. Absurd. They were both issued on the requirement that .yu would officially be terminated. It would take until 2010 for that to happen, but the IANA eventually got its way. Burned by the experience, the organization laid down the new, stricter set of rules and timescales for TLD expirations that exist today. It's these rules that will soon apply to the .io domain. They are firm and they are clear. Once the country code no longer exists, the domain must cease to exist too, ideally within three to five years. Like a tenant being told that their landlord is selling up and they must move, every individual and company who uses a .io domain will be told the same. I thought there was some chance of this domain surviving, but this seems really bad. This seems really bad, in particular actually for us with upload thing, because all the upload thing assets are on utfs.io. So if we go to like pick.ping.gg, which is my service for managing pictures for things like asset creation, I grab one of these links. This is on a UTFS IO domain, which I thought was a really safe domain to use for hosting our files. Turns out it's not. That is going to be bad. We have some work to do there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> .io has become popular with startups, particularly those involved in crypto. We're, we're not crypto. Don't, don't accuse us there. Yeah. Bad. They are businesses that often identify with one of the original principles of the internet, that cyberspace grants a form of independence to those who use it. Yet it is the long tail of real world history that might force them on a major change. The IANA may fudge its own rules and allow .io to continue to exist. Money talks, and there's a lot of it tied up in these domains. However, the history of the USSR and Yugoslavia still looms large. The IANA may feel that playing fast and loose with TLDs will only come back to haunt them. Whatever happens, the warning for future tech founders is clear. Be careful when picking your TLDs. Physical history is never as separate from our digital future as we like to think. Okay, now that we've run through this, I have some skepticism. My first big thing is that I think there's a huge difference here between the examples given before and the IO TLDs, where a lot of these countries had debates over who was the true successor where like, with something like the USSR becoming Russia or with Yugoslavia being split up into four countries, there's an actual debate over who should own it. The interesting thing with the British Indian Ocean Territory is that the argument wasn't the British Indian Ocean Territory, the name should be owned by this other country, is that it shouldn't have existed in the first place. So it's not like there's a debate over who has the rights to this name and to this TLD, it's who has the rights to this land. And my guess is that the UK probably has much more say in that naming. And as such, they might be able to continue owning it even if the territory doesn't exist because the use of this TLD is not representative of British Indian Ocean territory. Like I have never seen any British Indian Ocean website before. It seems like the TLD just kind of became something way further, like more than any other country code TLD. I can't even imagine a .io domain that was part of the British Indian Ocean Territory and not somebody just misusing it. And that separation is a much bigger deal when you compare it to something like the Yugoslavia one, which was .yu. Nobody was going to use .yu outside of representing their country. So I could see why there was so much debate over all of these things. But I think .io is very different here because it's not it's not being used to represent the Indian Ocean Territory. It's being used as dot input output. The only thing even close in here is dot me, but dot me isn't going through any debates. The fact that this TLD has far outgrown its territory to the point where it, like 
it's easy to forget the territory even existed and many didn't even know that, I think makes it more likely that something will keep these domains safe. People are hunting in my chat and apparently the only example they could find of a .io that's a government site is .gov.io. This is the official IO registry, which is run by the British Indian Ocean Territory, by the way. When you get an IO domain, I'm pretty sure it goes through this, even if you're buying it through another source. A lot of these country code TLDs, since the domains have to be registered through the country, there are broker services that will collaborate with people in this case, in the British Indian Ocean Territory in order to license those domains externally. That's why a lot of these two-letter country codes cost so much more money because there's a company running in the country just to license these domains outside of the country. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. The IO namespace is highly sought after, but it's still relatively new, which means there's still time to get in. Okay, that's not true anymore. Copyright 97 to 2021. <laughs> Fun. But as they say here, like this is the official registry. They claim early adopters started using IO as an abbreviation for the standard industry term input-output. Initially serving as an official country code for a group of small islands and atolls, IO domains became a staple in startup culture. Internet users around the world associate .io websites with the latest and greatest technology and software brands. And they're even branding it as a replacement for .com. That's the key here. It seems like this has been sold to people as a replacement for .com, not as the British Indian Ocean Territory. Yeah. So as scary as this is, and it is scary, I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's not, I think we should come out Okay, I am curious to see where this goes and to see what precedent it sets because a two letter generic TLD is not a thing that's happened before. The two letters are country codes. Everything else isn't. But I think I, I think it's going to be okay. Let me know if you think the same or if you're feeling different. And until next time, buy a safe domain.